This isn't my house. Written by Greg388. Read by no one and nobody. Chapter 4. This isn't my living room. The man's arms strained against the weight set against them. With heavy breaths, he slowly marched towards the door to his home, a great multitude of plastic bags hanging from his upper limbs. The man was a firm believer in the age-old art of only taking a single trip from the vehicle to the home after a grocery run. With a great skill, born from years of grocery hauling, the man unlocked and opened his front door without so much as a single bag sliding out of position. He entered his home, closed the door loudly behind him with a kick of his foot, and immediately he developed a twitch in his eye. Not only was this no longer his living room, but it was full of animals. The butter yellow pegasus with a pink mane hummed cheerfully to her little animal friends as she filled their food bowls. To her, the midday meal wasn't a chore. Far from it. It was actually her favorite part of the day. She always loved watching the animals as they stuffed their cute faces full of food. Sometimes they would get a bit rowdy and push at each other, but with gentle persuasion, they would always go right back to getting along and each having their fair share. They were all such well-behaved dears. The Pegasus happily trotted to the entrance of her foliage-covered cottage, a light skip accentuating the joy presented in her gait. It was time to feed the indoor animals, and then herself. Nudging the door open, the Pegasus entered her home. The Pegasus stood in her doorway, her brain trying to process the signals it was receiving from her eyes. Slowly, things began to click into place in her mind. Her pony friends had told her their rooms were being replaced, but she didn't quite understand what they meant at the time. Then, the smallest thought floated through her mind. It was an incredibly small thought, but it had the largest effect a thought could hope to have on this particular Pegasus. It made her eyes widen, her heart hasten, her breath become rapid and shallow, all because of a tiny thought composed of four simple words. Where are my animals? The man let out a groan of annoyance. He knew it would happen eventually. He wished it wouldn't, but he knew it would all the same. If only it had the common decency to occur when his arms weren't less occupied with plastic baggage. Lousy universe and its complete lack of etiquette regarding the proper time to swap one's room with that of a random stranger. Who the man is beginning to suspect is either not entirely human or else a very unique individual. He marched through the room towards the kitchen, taking note of various animals that made a path for him as if given an unheard command to not impede his movement. There were birds, mice, badgers, chipmunks, a rabbit, and all sorts of small creatures he didn't recognize immediately. The man moved to the kitchen and stored every bag in the fridge, the only modern appliance in this woefully outdated room, without even bothering to sort the contents. He figured it'd be best to deal with the sudden large amount of animals on his hands first. The man absentmindedly rubbed the bridge of his nose. If only he knew what was changing his rooms around and how to reverse it. The pony was not doing well in the broadest sense of the word. If one could see the metaphorical length of her face at the moment, they would not refer to her as a pony. Instead, they would declare her a horse, with unusually stubby legs, and immediately dare the shortest friend they knew to attempt to ride her. That would not end well. To top it off, the pony's actual appearance was nearly as bad as her metaphorical one. Her mane looked as though it had been used to house the very animals she was searching for. The fur along her cheeks, chest, and forelegs was matted down with the slightest traces of salt, evidence of the amount she had been crying. Adding an emphasis to all the physical signs was the way the Pegasus was now carrying herself. Brokenly, even the most dense of creatures would take a single look at this being and realize she had just lost something so important it left her no idea where to even begin to recover from. The Pegasus dragged herself up onto the strange couch in the strange animal-deprived room, which was nearly destroyed by the Pegasus' frantic search for the animals, and allowed herself to collapse upon it. She felt something underneath her, poking into her. The Pegasus looked back towards her side to see a small black rectangle sticking out from beneath her. With the slightest amount of effort required, the Pegasus gripped the object in her mouth and pulled it out. 
hearing a slight click as she did so. The object appeared to be covered in symbols and numbers, with a few strange words. After a slight hum, music began to fill the air of the room. The Pegasus dropped the object in shock, looking for the source of the sounds. It seemed to be coming from a large rectangle on the wall, and after a moment, the Pegasus realized it was lighting up. There were even pictures starting to show up on it. In the arms of the angel. The man was not having an easy time. The man's troubles stemmed from the animals that had appeared in his new living room. To be more specific, it was a single animal that was causing issues. While the majority acted as if they had never seen a human male before, and immediately shied away from him, a lone white rabbit had taken the initiative upon itself to display the complete opposite reaction and assaulted the man. The man's first response was to simply chuckle and remove the rabbit from his person. But one can only stand being kicked, bit at, and scratched for so long before they begin to lose patience. The scene had rapidly devolved into one of sheer chaos. The man stood tall, panting heavily, his body covered in red lines, bite marks, and bruises. The rabbit was in a similar state, its own breathing unnaturally heavy, tufts of fur missing from its body, and evidence of blunt impact dotting its form. The room surrounding the two combatants was, for the most part, utterly destroyed. The more comically flimsy pieces of furniture were nothing more than piles of broken wood and fabric. Several birdhouses that once hung from the ceiling were smashed to bits on the ground, and all the animals, save the rabbit, were huddled in a corner as far away from the heat of battle as they could get. The two beings stared at each other's eyes for but a moment before one of the birds let out a shrill chirp, and they plunged into the fight once more. The Pegasus was the living definition of sadness. Tears flowed freely from her as she desperately attempted to push the numbers on the small black rectangle with her hoof. The cushions under and around the Pegasus had become sopping wet as she continued struggling to get her hoof to press the very specific numbers needed. She didn't know what the rectangle was or who the strange creature that appeared in it was, but she did know that it was showing her many animals that needed help, and somehow copying those numbers that appeared would allow her to help them. She had to try. Much time passed as she continually tried again and again to copy the numbers. Her tears still flowed, but not as strong as when they began. The Pegasus barely even noticed the images on the screen had been changing, until a voice came out of it quite plainly. The Honey Badger. The Pegasus didn't know what it was, but something told her deep inside that she had to take a moment to watch this new message. The battle was nearing its conclusion. That much was obvious. The man wiped some sweat off his brow with the back of his hand. The rabbit did likewise. The rabbit struck something resembling a martial pose. It was ready to finish the fight for good. The man had similar thoughts, but he did not strike a pose, or make any sort of threat. Instead, he stood up to his full height, and simply walked out of the room. The rabbit stood there, confused. His opponent just left him. It was a short while later that the man returned to the room, carrying a sheet of paper and a pen. The man offered the objects to the rabbit, who quickly snatched them and gave the man a questioning glance before looking the paper over. It was a peace treaty. The rabbit looked from the man to the treaty and ever so slowly broke the pen. The man frowned. Ignoring the man's disapproval, the rabbit dipped a single paw into the ink, leaking from the pen, and placed it upon the paper. He then motioned for the other animals to come forward and do the same. The man watched with a smirk as each animal left their mark upon the paper. Then, as the last animal was walking away, he stepped forward to dip his thumb into the ink and leave his own mark on the paper. They had all come to an agreement. Now the man could get back to the important business of putting away groceries. The Pegasus shakily stood up, the last of her tears long gone. She knew what she had to do. She had to follow the example of that brave little soul, the honey badger. The honey badger wouldn't just lay around moping, no, the honey badger would go out and take what it needed, in the case of her lost animals. She would go out and find her little animal friends, wherever they might be. She would bring them back safely home, and she wouldn't let anything stand in her way. With a fierce determination, the pegasus donned a scarf 
and left the relative safety of her home. Watch out, world. There's a new honey badger, and she will not stop until she has found her lost animals. A shame she left without any idea where to start looking.